Hello everybody, this is Anna, also known as Ananita on Ravelry. On the screen now you can see where you else can find me. And since a few days, you also can find me on my very own website, ananidayarns.com. Next to me, you see my furry companion and co-host, Benny. He's a Westie, West Highland White Terrier. And I always say Terrier, it's Terrier, I guess, in English. And he is uh, a bit more than one year old. I'm coming to you from Lower Austria, near to Vienna, and this is a knitting podcast. Um, I do very much appreciate that you again, or the first time, hit the play button to watch my knitting podcast because there are so many well-made ones out there. And yes, I hope you enjoy the show. <laughs> okay, I don't know, maybe... Benny? Rüber? Bist du rüber? No, he wants to stay with me. <laughs> Always when I start talking, he comes to me and... Um, sits on my lap or lays down on my feet. Okay, um, there was very much going on in the last week. Just for you to know, because many uh, asked me and um, sent me um, well wishes. Is that correct? <laughs> so that I get well, you know. Um, my wrist is getting better. Um, not my arm is hurting anymore, but I, I still feel something in my wrist. Yesterday I was at the gym for the first time again. Oh no, that shaking is Benny. Okay, <laughs> we will see if it will be okay. Um, I was at the gym and because I'm doing words, um, you know, I, I don't know the English word, read the screen. That's what I'm doing. And it's not very good for a hurting wrist, but it was okay. It was a bit more hurting afterwards, but I missed to go to the gym already. And I have just to do something because I'm sitting all the day in front of my desk. Or I walk with Benny. In the morning today, we met another Westie and that's so not often the case. It was so cute to see them together because I, I think um, dogs, two dogs of the same race, I think it's the word, um, are, are behaving in a total different way than, uh, no, breeds, I'm sorry, than two other, uh, two foreign dogs, so to say, different breeds. And I, I always am very happy to see Westies because you don't see them very often. In the 90s, they were very common because of the um, of the TV ad. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, but now it's not often the case. So, okay, I will put him on the sofa and hope he will stay. Yes, um, okay, I wrote notes this time because there was much going on. I told you I made my, my uh, website, um, I finished my website and there you can find also, uh, uh, in the future, I'm sorry, from now on I will do show notes and the show notes you will find uh, on my website, ananidayarns.com and it's called Ananida Yarns because I am dyeing yarns and you will find also the shop there and you can shop there on the website because it's a shop, so you can shop there. Sounds pretty clear. And yes, there are still some yarns left. I think half of the yarns I dyed are still in the shop. On many different bases, we have the sturdy sock base, which is um, a, like Opal and Regia, but a bit softer. And this sturdy yarn I also have with um, gold and silver stellina. This is called gold shimmer base or silver shimmer base. And then we have merino singles. It's a, a hundred, yeah, 100% superwash merino, but singles. They are very bouncy and kind of thick. It's still fingering weight yarn, but it's very fluffy and bouncy and perfect, I think, for sh shawls, cowls and stuff or hats. And then we have a Merino Superior. It's also fingering weight yarn and it's a normal plied yarn and very soft and drapey. It's so pretty. I started a shawl with this um, in the Latte Macchiato uh, colorway, 
but I won't show it today because I want to knit further on to show you the behavior of the colorway. Yes, so much about that. Okay, we are doing a knit along. We're, I'm hosting the blanket along, which goes through the whole year of 2017. So we, the call will end on New Year's Eve. The next winner, <laughs> Benny Oz, he's licking my feet. <laughs> the next winner will be drawn on October 1st. And uh, this time from our Ravelry thread. I have a specific thread for the blanket along where you put your whips. Um, in the first post I entered all the rules. There are really no rules. You can enter whips, you don't have to finish a blanket to be able to win and so on. So yes, come in our group, post your blankets. It's I, I said call, it's not a call, it's a make along because you can weave or uh, sew, you can crochet, you can knit, you can do every kind of crafting technique with which you can create a blanket and enter and win. It's just it's just a fun thing, you know, just to make us happy. Yes, that's our blanket along. Now we can right go over after a sip of coffee to finished objects because I have one. Mm. Okay, my finished object. I'm so fancy today because I have them on sock blockers. <laughs> Here are the Stars Hollow Gnome Acres socks on the Sparkle Gnome base. When I la the this sock was already finished last week, and last week I was I stopped here. I I put the marker here just for you to see the progress because I always like to see what the podcaster did in one week or in two weeks. Okay, here I stopped, so now I can put it off, and then I knit the foot and the toe okay Benny is hearing something I don't know what the main foot is out of gnome acres sparkle gnome base colorway stars hollow um, these were my autumn socks from last year but I didn't finish them so this year and the contrasting cuff heel and toe is made of a no brand yarn just a German no brand yarn, but I think they, the color goes very well together with the red in the main foot. And it was a lot of fun to do now. In the last episode, I said it was boring for me to knit plain stockinette in the round or even the blueberry waffle pattern in the round, but now I'm back into the flow again and I'm so loving it. <laughs> I missed it very much, but you all know, I think, how it is when you are not in your knitting mode joint. It's, I can't stand it, really. I can't stand it when I have this. But now I'm back again. And yes, I think I could stop showing it, but it's so pretty. Yay. <laughs> Ooh, that's a, that's a cool. <laughs> that's a cool picture. Yes, they are soft, they are fun, they are pretty much perfectly striping. And it's so typical stash hollow because you always have these pretty autumn leaves in the intro of the show and pretty much in every um, episode there is autumn <laughs> i would love to travel connecticut one time because i think it's very similar to austria to the to lower austria um, but i think it's prettier <laughs> and i love autumn and the weather is cooling down. Okay, now you maybe think what she's talking about. She's wearing a summer dress. In my flat, uh, it's still very warm. But um, outside, it's not that warm. I don't know how much degrees we get, will get today. But yesterday, we had a... Read the screen. And uh, the temperature... Temp temperature... It's a difficult word for a German... I was was falling down and it rained and the sky was gray and I love it. I love this weather. I love fall. I, I so can't wait that fall starts. Okay. <laughs> he just wanted to say he loves me. Okay, star solo sock. Um oh yes, I forgot to say. I knit these. Do you wanna say something? <laughs> I knit these on 
Knit Pro Symphonies um, on two millimeter, and this is US zero. Because you can't easily get in the German speaking countries the 2.25 millimeter needles. And I think that's what most podcaster use uses because it's great. I have found out that two millimeter needles, so US zero is a tiny little bit too small. They fit me well, but they would fit better if they were a tiny little bit bigger, a bit more slouchy, especially um, the heel would be fitting better. But when I use, or if I use two and a half millimeter, let me check what it is in the US size. Two and a half millimeter is one and a half um, US. Yes, and you oh, oh, oh yes, you can't get easily one uh, US one DPNs or all needles in the German speaking countries. I was using always one and a half, but then my gauge changed and the socks became very slouchy. Afterwards, I started to use US zero, so 2.0 um, millimeters. And now they are very skinny, a bit too skinny, I think, on the heel. So I have two possibilities. Um, I could use less stitches and use US one and a half, but then I don't like the fabric. Or I could use more stitches, now I'm using 64, and stay with the two millimeter needles, US zero. I don't know, because I can't get the US ones. Yes, and it's, um, I don't know if I said DPNs from Knit Pro Symphony. These needles are the most enjoyable ones for me um, regarding socks. Because the needle tips are sharp enough for socks. I don't really knit lace socks. No, not I don't really. I never knit lace socks. And only medium patterned socks like blueberry waffle or, so or things like that. And therefore the symphonies are just perfect. They are very... Um, they they don't have much grip so like as bamboo needles so the knitting is fast and i like wooden needles very much the feel of wooden needles and i use the shorter ones i think mine are 15 centimeters so six inches and the normal dpns the common dpns i think have 20 centimeters So eight inches, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Then I made progress with my Christmas socks. I have them in my self-sewn Christmas bag from last year. What do you want? Tiny little guy. <laughs> He's just the cutest dog in the whole wide world. Oh, I'm sorry. Um... Okay, last time I, I didn't put a progress thing, things, uh, thing here. I think last time I was, did I turn? Yes, last time I just turned the heel and did some rounds. So this is a homespun house yarn, a soft sock base colorway Kevin, exclamation <laughs> mark, I think from the Kevin movies. And the pattern... Oh, Benny is licking my feet. Now he has to go away. I'm sorry. Okay, back again. Um, as I said, it's a homespun house. Kevin exclamation mark colorway on the soft sock base. I cast on 64 stitches using US zero. So two, and, uh, two millimeter needles. Uh, again, the Knit Pro Symphonies. And again, the same problem. They fit, but... They are a tiny little bit too small, too narrow. Yeah. Okay, it's the blueberry waffle pattern. And <laughs> I have to admit, I should have had knit a vanilla sock because the foot is so gorgeous. I love the striping. I already asked Molly if she will dye this colorway again. 
And it's interesting, the striping down here looks much prettier than here. I don't know what was going on here. Here it's looking very good on the foot. But on the leg it's a bit busy. What? Why does, does this happen? Can you tell me? That's just awkward and this is pretty. The striping is very distinguished and here it's just all over the place. But that's just perfect. Yeah, and the contrasting cuff, heel and maybe toe, I will see if I have enough after knitting the second sock and the second um, heel. I will weigh it and will uh, decide if I have enough to knit both contrasting toes. Uh, the contrasting color also is from Molly. I don't know if it has a name because she added it just to my order because she knew that I love to knit contrasting cuff heel and toe. <laughs> okay, it's just so soft and so pretty and squishy and here it looks very, very cool. This is awkward. This is cool. Awkward? Cool. <laughs> and th that's just stunning. Okay. So I did already the cast on. I will knit down to the heel, turn the heel, and then, as I said, I will weigh it. I think now I have nine gram. I don't know how much one toe will use us up. Maybe I should knit another sock and weigh it before knitting the toe and after knitting the toe and afterwards decide how I will go on with these. I hope that that was clear. It feels like I'm I'm rambling a bit. I hope you understand everything. Okay, that's my first whip. My second whip is out of my self-made hand-dyed yarn because I was so in temptation and I said, okay, let's just do it because it's so pretty. This is on my sturdy sock base. I already caked it up. This is sturdy sock. No, not sturdy sock. It's the sturdy sock with the sh silver shimmer. So I called it silver shimmer base, but it's this nearly the same content. Um, just the Stellina is in here. And the colorway is called the 90s. And I decided just to knit without contrasting cuff or heel or toe to see how the yarn behaves in the different patterns. And I think it's just perfect. I love this yarn. In the ribbing it's pretty and in the plain stockinette it's very pretty. And I'm excited to see how it behaves with the short rows. If there will be pooling also. Yeah. It's a bit sparkly, not too heavy. I think the Gnome Acre sparkle is... No, it's okay. No, it's okay. The Gnome Acre Sparkle also is a bit lighter. And this is, as I said, Silver Stellina. And I also have Gold Stellina in the shop. I don't know how much there is left, but you have to check it. Okay, it's just a sock for me. I started with two and a half millimeter and changed the needles here. I don't know, maybe you can see that it's getting smaller because it was too slouchy again for me. Two and a half millimeter just don't work for me anymore. Hmm. Okay. And then my last work in progress is my Georgetown cardigan. Mm. Um, I decided to wait with the Hohi Locatelli wrap because there's a thing going on in my local yarn shop. There is most of my yarn I buy online because most of the brands I really like or want to knit with are just not um, available here in Austria or in Germany. The indie dyed yarns and then the things like hedgehog fibers and stuff. So. We have one reseller from Hedgehog Fibers in Vienna. She's the only one. <laughs> uh, 
and it's very hard to get yarns as Malibrigo or um, the Nitpick stuff or there was the other brand Malibrigo and then the the yarn which, uh, with the nearly same name Madeline Tosh and you all knit these gorgeous yarns and I just can't get them here without a lot of duty and much shipping costs and so I was talking um, three or four months ago with my local yarn shop owner <laughs> she has very special yarns always but most are from Italy or Denmark and Germany yeah and some Austrian yarns and then I talked to her uh, with her and asked her if she want to add hedgehog fibers for example in, to her shop because it's so special and you can't get it easily in Austria because we only have one reseller in Austria and n only in Vienna not lower Austria and so on and we talked a bit and then she said no I don't want to steal the business from the lady in Vienna because they are not that much fancy knitters and by fancy knitters I mean who want who knitters who are um willing to spend a bit more money on yarn because the German brands are always much cheaper like Opel and Regia are much cheaper than Hedgehog Fibers or Malibrigo and stuff and then I um, told her about other yarns I think are very pretty are very common in English patterns English written patterns and she's very open-minded towards all these foreign brands and patterns and stuff and now she texted me and told me that she will add uh, Malabrigo yeah Malabrigo to her shop and it's Malabrigo Arroyo Arroyo I don't know how to pronounce it I'm very sorry with the screen and she informed me that she has it in her shop now and I think it's so great because it was kind of my idea and she was so open to it and I promised her to buy yarn from her if she adds new um, brands to her shop yes and so I was browsing browsing through Ravelry what I could knit with Arroyo or Arroyo Melrigo yarns because it's a sport weight and I normally knit with fingering weight or even thicker but in the middle in between I never use sport weight so I found a Hoi Locatelli pattern and it's a sweater and it's called Feathers in the Wind, I think. Let me check it. Yes, Feathers in the Wind. And so be I thought before I buy a sweaters, sweaters quantity of yarn, I have to um, finish my sweater or cardigan I have on the needles. So, and now we come to my whip. And it is the Georgetown cardigan by Hannah Fedick. It's a seamed cardigan without buttons and it's open but it's fitted um, around the hips so it's not that slouchy as the featherweight cardigan but from the structure it's nearly the same but you have to seam it. The pattern gives a, um, a bit seamed cardigan and a totally seamed cardigan and I decided to do the totally seamed one because I have to learn it. Um, I knit this out of cashmere tweed that is the back side. When I sh last showed you I was here and I knit up to the shoulders. I think you can see it very good. It's made out of Shulana cashmere tweed and it's, um, what is it? I'm knitting it with four, five millimeter needles. So it's US eight. I should have had knitted with four and a half. With, so with US seven, but I forget it was laying there. And then, then I took away the needles for another project, came back to the project and thought, oh, these are the four and a half millimeters. And the negative thing about the knit pros is you can't read the number of the needle. Um, on the needle itself because it will go away with the time so I think it it's not a big problem 
Okay, that's the back side and it's the cashmere tweed that means um, 70% wool and 30% cashmere. It has 175 meters on a 50 gram ball. Read the screen for the American yardage. Okay, and then I just added with the stitch holder, but I can take it off the, what is it? Left, the left front. So the back is finished, the left front is finished, but I didn't block them yet. I haven't blocked them yet. So here are the shoulders. It's the left or the right front? No, the left. So here, it's heavy curling here. So it's very, very small. So we'll go there because then you will pick up the stitches and knit a very wide cola in one by one ribbing. And the ribbing looks like this. It's soft like butter. You only have 30% cashmere and that does so much. Okay, so. And I love this burgundy color. It's the back, but I hold it in front so you can see it next to my skin. I think it's very pretty. And I already cast on the right front. It's a very quick knit because of the big needles. And after knitting the right front, I have to knit the sleeves and they will be long, and then the cola. And after finishing that, I will buy the Malabrigo yarn and knit the feather th feathers in the wind. Not earlier. I have to finish it because I wanna wear it. Okay, that was my last work in progress. Mm -hmm. I just need coffee. Oh. It will be a long day today because Benny will um, start pet obedience school i'm a bit excited and nervous and hope it i just hope it will go well because not every dog is very friendly to him maybe i think we could add a bit more light <laughs> um oh there's a needle a homeless needle okay purchases i because it kind of starts to become fall and it's my favorite season of the year. Okay, I also love the Christmas season, but fall is, as I said in the last year, it's so special to me. And I wanted to knit, um, or I wanted to have Halloween colorways. Fall and kind of Halloween. Last year I bought the Stars Hollow and the All Hallows Eve by Molly. And I knit them both, but I haven't knit the Latte Macchiato, not, not Latte Macchiato. Pumpkin Spice Latte. So Pumpkin Spice Latte is for me fall, autumn colorway, but I also wanted to have Halloween colorways. So I decided to buy Opal. This is the first Opal yarn I bought. I mean, here you see it's a pumpkin, you know, that's pretty much Halloween. <laughs> and on the tag, you can see how the sock will look like. Um, the English pr um, translation would be the line, so to say, is Wonderland, Opal Wonderland, and the colorway is called Dream Journey in English. The colorway number is 28947. It's pretty. And I think Opal is getting softer. And the second purchase, halloween -y colorway, and I, you have to imagine orange kaffee and toe is this the sock will look like this i don't know if it will focus <laughs> no it doesn't focus and the line is called opal play and the colorway in german is apfeltauchung it's the game where you put a huge um, um, <laughs> a huge you know thing filled with water put apples inside and then you have to get the apples just with your mouth 
it's a summer play. So, Apfeltauchen. The colorway number is 28951. These are my autumn Halloween colorways. And then I purchased, it's not really knitting related, but kind of, because it was knit in a fabric, you know, so I have to show you. Um, for the first time, last the last weekend, I watched with my two best friends, for the first time, Star Wars, and I became a fan. <laughs> and so I had to buy these, I saw them in our grocery store. Star Wars songs. <laughs> I think they're great. These are okay, you know, it's Star Wars. But now you have to see. These are just my two favorite characters of Star Wars are on there. My two the two I, I love them. <laughs> it's so great. Do you I don't know if you're interested in the German translation. The, he is called in German R2D2. We say uh, we don't say uh, normally it, we should say R2D2, but we say in, instead of two zwei, we say zwo. It's for the read the screen, so you can um, um, not get it wrong because three is in um, German. Drei, zwei, drei, it's very similar and so the, 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 you can get confused if you use a read the screen and so we say R2D2 and that guy is C3PO so I think you say C3PO, R2D2 and C3PO and I love these two and I love Yoda okay Yoda socks would be also very cool but these guys are just and i don't know if you watch the big bang theory i've watched it and i'm desperately waiting for the um, ninth season to I, I think the ninth to come to netflix because i think sheldon behaves as c3po in one episode they say he's looking like him and i really think they are similar from their behavior and the way they talk sheldon is c3po so I have Star Wars socks. I love Star Wars. We watched Star Wars um, 4, so New Hope. And then on the same evening, we watched The Empire Strikes Back. And I can't wait to watch on, but we want to watch it together. And I have to wait till my, till one of my friends comes back from Portugal. And then we will go on. And I just love it. And I love Princess Leia. And I already wrote her, I think... Princess Leia is looking exactly like Sarah from the Love Soccer podcast. They are twins. It's, I always thought, my gosh, it's Sarah on the screen. Yes. I don't like that she is in love with Han. I don't want it. I want, I want her to be together with Luke. But I, I think they will be a couple. But we will see. No spoiler. Please don't spoil anything. I haven't just watched. I just have watched these two films. Okay. Um. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um. I just want to give you an outcast for the future. I decided that I want to do my two seasonal knit alongs again from the last year, the fall along and the advent along. I would like to start the fall along on uh, October 1st, I think, but we I will inform you in, on the next episode and I will do the advent along again because I very much enjoyed it and I love seasonal things. I always love seasonal things. Yeah, so that was everything for today there's much to do today as i said uh, afterwards i needless to say have to edit and stuff and then i um, eat my lunch very quickly not very quickly we're very quick <laughs> would be correct and then i will have to go with benny to the pet obedience school for the first time and i'm very excited 
Okay, it was a pleasure to have you here and it's nice to be back in the routine again. And yes, come to our threads and groups and everything. Contact me via email or Instagram or subscribe to my channel so you all always get a notification if I upload podcasts or vlogs. And I wish you a very happy knitting week and we will see each other in one week again. Bye bye.